Today we're going to look at two of the biggest performance hits you can get within PowerShell and one of the things I think most of us are probably guilty of doing. Um, first off the bat, we're going to look at arrays and if you have an array declared anywhere in your script, something that says, hey I need to create an array because I'm going to push an object in there, chances are you shouldn't be using an array. Now, the reason I say that is because it's a performance hit, and I do mean a massive performance hit when you're adding objects to arrays. Don't get me wrong, if you've got a full array item, like you're taking a table out of a database and just throwing all the results in, then it's going to create a single array, and that's fine. But chances are, at that point, you're not adding to the array or subtracting from the array. You already have a complete array object. Where you declare an array is where you're expecting to add objects, and that's usually where the problem starts. Because if you're adding a single object, it's it's a minor deal, no biggie. But if you're adding line after line after line after line in, the effect is that the way PowerShell handles those arrays, and I emphasize arrays, because it's no longer a single array, it's multiple arrays getting created. So it's, it's trashing the old array and putting the contents into a new array and so on and so forth. And there's actually a really good video out there from uh, PowerShell.org regarding this with a lovely presentation. I won't get into that right now, but let's just say that it, it can be much better described than probably I am. So one of the examples I want to give to you is the performance of that in a ridiculous state, first of all. So in this case, we're going to do something close to like 10,000 items into an array, hence my big array. And for those of you who've been paying attention, um, I'm being narrating and what's on the screen hasn't changed because it hasn't finished yet and it won't for a little while. Um, because it will take that long. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to fast forward to the conclusion of that array being created so you can look at the result. So here we are about a minute into the future and the result comes back telling us that it was 3 minutes 55 seconds to load those 10,000 items into the array. Now that's obviously a very long time but what alternative do we have? Well we could actually use um, stacks and if I put the stacks and I load it in you can see the time returned and I didn't edit it that was the real time 250 sorry 225 milliseconds uh, that's that's not even comparable that's a truly tremendous difference in terms of performance there so if I do my big um, stack I can see that there's uh, 100,000 items if I do my big array, there's 100,000 items. So there's no difference in terms of the content, and there's no difference in the general thing, other than the huge performance. So what are some of the other things that we can look at? So let's look at a medium-sized one. So if we say we've got like 1,000 records, this is more realistic of what you might be doing. It's 47 milliseconds versus 18 milliseconds using a stack versus an array. Now, stacks have a, a lot of different things in terms of they use pops and they use pushes to, in terms of terminology, and I won't get into that right now. But certainly, if you're using arrays to store data temporarily or filter data, really should consider stacks as a better option. Now, another thing that we're also probably all guilty of is using where clauses. So we're going to use a couple of measurements. So we're going to do our big array here. And we're going to do where object greater than. So we get a, a result. And that took 711 milliseconds. So we're going to try that again, but with a uh, slash dash, sorry, um, filter script. Now this is an improvement. And it cuts it down by 100 milliseconds, or in this case, about 30 milliseconds, roughly. Now, these are all good and all, but they're not nearly as good as just taking a where directly from the array. And this is where we're all guilty of doing this. So if you didn't know, which probably if you're watching this video, you might not, where was added in PowerShell 4, I think. Uh, so certainly for 5 onwards. So you can actually do that query directly against the array and then only output the results, which instead of piping the full array into another object, then having it filtered. The result, as you can see, is now 238 milliseconds compared with our original over half a second. And obviously the results, the bigger, 
get better. Now, the other thing I want to do here is just choose the output. So this is our big array, and you see the numbers count up. Now, what you'll see in a minute is the stacks, and you'll see that the numbers run opposite way. So they count down. And this is something to consider. Arrays count from uh, first in, uh, sorry, first in, last out. So the last number you put in is the first number to come out. While stacks work with the um, last in, first out. So as long as you're familiar with that and you're not needing to do any sorting, these are two really good options for improving the performance of what you're doing within PowerShell, using stacks and filtering on the actual array or stack itself.